uh, you have Jonathan and Joe coming up to. We're going to be talking about uh, the co application for the phase two of the town hall project, which is the uh, bubbler wall fish ladder road access <laughs> safety everything else you know bridge crossing so there's a lot here Whenever you guys are ready. If I could just preface this, just so everyone understands, um, it was a desire um, when we looked at the town hall project that we not only look at restoring the building itself, but in time to try to look at the area around it. And uh, some of these plans go back to uh, probably at least a decade ago when Joe Magny of VHB, who's our guest tonight, um, helped design some of the reconstruction work that happened out um, on Route 130 in front of Town Hall, in front of First Church. There have been subtle changes over the years, but I think we all recognize about how much more safer it is compared to um, what it was a decade ago, but just how we reconfigured the island, how we've added more green space, how we've put in the um, uh, sort of, uh, I don't want to say raised crosswalks, but there's a, you know, there's a uh, pavement markings in the actual pavement, so uh, it's separated. Um, all of the sidewalks in the area have been made handicap accessible for the most part as part of that um, state project that was funded through federal funds. So there were all sorts of requirements that we had to do, which I'm sure, um, Joe can touch on, but um, it was a goal of the town hall group that, you know, obviously focus on the building first, but then in time, if funding allowed, to look at that next phase, which would roughly go from the side of the town hall building um, to where the ticket booth is at the um, grist mill. And I think, as a general background, that's probably about it. At the end, I'd like to touch just on a couple of things that are in your packet about the CPA as it relates to this project. And one other one that I know is interested in submitting an application um, next week for their, for their uh, review for upcoming annual town meeting. Okay. Paul, why don't you introduce uh, okay. our other guests? I, I know who they are, but... Um... Yeah, we, ha we have uh, Joe Magny from Vanessa Hang in Breslin, known as VHB. Um, Joe has worked on several village area improvement projects, all of which have included preservation of historical features. Uh, Joe also played a, a critical role in the development of the state's award-winning design guidelines for roadway infrastructure, which includes incorporating streetscapes and aesthetics into any project, which he has done for our projects. Um, we also have Jonathan Josh, who you're all familiar with. John has been on board several committees overseeing projects to enhance and restore the, uh, the, the village historic features. Uh, John is also on the historical commission. And uh, I'm just gonna give you a, you, next slide please. I got it. Just a quick overview uh, of what they'll be talking about before I hand it over. Um, this is the, the sort of the, the vision of the square and as approved at town meeting as part of the Community Preservation Act, the town of Sandwich had a vision to preserve and restore one of, the, one of its gems, the town hall. And uh, improvements included not only the building, but also the surrounding landscape and access areas to the building. You can see in this photo here, the front entrance improvements right in front of the stairs are already completed. To the left, you can see uh, the pedestrian standing on a bridge or walking to a bridge, which is part of uh, the phase two project. Next slide. Uh, before I, I, I let these two uh, present the details of the next phase, I'd like to take you back a little bit to, to where this vision initially started in the village. Uh, it started back in the 1990s. We began an effort to improve Town Hall Square safety and pedestrian access, ac accessibility. It was a long process, um, but in 2007, we were finally able to complete this project with state funds. And um, 
The project included improved sidewalks, pedestrian ramps, um, and the crosswalks, the brick crosswalks you all know um, and walk on out there today. Unfortunately, we were not able to complete our desired connection due to limited funding, and this included access to Town Hall and the Fountain area, which is the bubbler. In 2008, we com completed another, another project, um, this one with Cape Cod Commission mitigation funds. This was the Main Street, Java Street pedestrian improvements. Um, that also includes sidewalks, brick crosswalks, intersection safety improvements, and landscape enhancement. In 2010, the town completed phase one of the award-winning historic town hall preservation and restoration project. While we were able to complete some front entrance accessibility improvements, we didn't have the funds again to complete the missing link to the fountain area. So that leads us to phase two of the historic town hall pedestrian safety and accessibility in Herring Run Preservation. This project includes completion of the missing pedestrian link to the fountain. It also includes dredging Mill Pond near Town Hall to preserve this resource area. Um, and thirdly, it includes rebuilding the retaining wall to protect the Herring Run and to secure the sidewalk in the new fountain area along the creek. So as you will see tonight, this project has numerous benefits, safety, pedestrian, accessibility, Herring Run improvements, and historical preservation. And from here, I'll pass it on to Joe to go into the engineering details. Uh, thank you, Paul, and good evening. Um, the, this is the technical portion of the presentation, um, and it'll be in essentially three parts. Uh, the, uh, the first two parts talk about the existing conditions and the problems we're, we're trying to deal with and try to resolve. The first segment is regarding pedestrian safety and accessibility. The second is the, uh, the condition of the wall that protects and delineates the historic Herring Run and Mill Pond and also, in, in effect, supports the infrastructure above it, the sidewalk and, and Water Street. And finally, I will uh, provide some graphics that show our recommendations. We're essentially at, uh, I'd say, 40, 45, 50 percent design, so we're open for ideas. It's, uh, it was really helpful to get to that point so we can evaluate a dollar value uh, to recommend to the con uh, Community Preservation Committee and to you folks so that you can consider funding the project. And that's our goal here tonight. I'm going to be a little dry tonight. It's a little dry in here, so I uh, hope you can share your water, Paul. <coughs> so the first piece is pedestrian safety. Uh, this is a, a map of, of the results of all of the good work the town has done throughout Town Hall Square. <coughs> It's created pedestrian paths that meet accessibility standards of the state and federal government throughout the square. I'll, I'll just trace the, the, uh, the, I guess, the brown lines that re represent, uh, this is the sidewalk on the north side of Water Street and Main Street, which connect uh, the, the two ends of the uh, town hall square all the way to Jarvis. It's continuous uh, across all the public ways. The same goes for the southern side of Main Street connecting to Water Street. Again, I owe you, bud. Thank you. I had plenty of moisture at 7 o'clock. <laughs> so did we. <laughs> the same goes for the southern um, side of Main Street. Uh, a continuous walk exists. We've not made any improvements on that side, but in, in essence, the walk is continuous. It may not satisfy ADA uh, standards, but it's continuous and allows pedestrians to find their way throughout that corridor. There is a subtle break in there where there is no walk, but there's pavement that can be used for a walk surface. And of course, the final leg leading up to Town Hall was c completed within the, 19, the 2007 improvement funded by the state and federal government. Now we're going to focus on the project area at hand. This is a blow up of the same area. Here's Town Hall and Main Street intersection that was improved. And I think I'm telling most of everybody in the room what they already know, that there is a, a, a distinct break in accessibility across the Fountain Plaza. And I'll show you, there, there are two problems with the Fountain Plaza. There's the, the change in grade via steps rather than ramps, uh, both from the street and the approaching walk. And, there's, and, and again, there is a stone wall that serves as a barrier just outside this building that doesn't allow you to pass from this building south to Water Street. Uh, and those are the issues we're dealing with in the project. 
So here's some photos. Uh, this, is, this is in the front of this building facing south down Water Street, and this is the barrier. Uh, you'll note that any pedestrian that wants to access the plaza and south down Water Street must enter the street, enter the traveled way, uh, and there is no ha um, uh, handicap ramp to do so, so it's inaccessible to reach the street for pedestrians, uh, for handicapped pedestrians. But in essence, this is a relatively dangerous condition for ped any pedestrian uh, who wants to access the south portion. Oh, nope. There it is. Now, this is uh, standing in the fountain region, just looking over the shoulder of the, the existing fountain. You'll see that the, the change in grade, of course, none of these uh, changes in grade satisfy ADA standards. They need to be ramped. They need to be in uh, less than 5% 5, 5 or less. And notice the, notice the condition of the plaza itself. Lots of breaks in the stone with in excess of one inch of uh, uh, differential between different surfaces, all in violation of uh, handicap standards. There's another view in the other way looking north. And this, this is important because it shows that there's also access from the street, which is not in compliance. And, it, and there's no barrier that prevents drainage from the roadway to enter this, this area. And many times, what water can collect in here, and it only has a slight drain to drain it. You, this can actually pond in five and 10 year events. Uh, and again, this, this photo shows the extent of damage of the surface, which is inaccessible for handicapped people. Uh, the second portion is to, to discuss existing conditions of the retaining wall that preserves the, uh, the and delineates the herring run and uh, protects the infrastructure above. The, this shot was important be, uh, because I wanted to show you there's two distinct walls. The, now we're, we're on the fountain plaza looking south up towards the ladder, the fish ladder. And this is um, right here the, is where the fish ladder starts. And the two distinct walls is the, that I'm going to talk about tonight is from the fish, fish ladder up and the fish ladder back to uh, Water Street. These are essentially side by side. Here's the fountain right here. This is the bridge uh, that, uh, where Water Street crosses over uh, Mill, Pond, Mill Brook. And now here's the trash barrel in the same plaza and this is the wall leading up to the fish ladder. If you'll note, in both cases, the stones at water, water's level are essentially in their original position. The water supports it on one side and the ground on the other. Those stones haven't moved. But the overburden of soil and moisture and water and runoff have forced the stones above the water level to move, to shift. Um, and it really goes to craftsmanship. A good wall will not experience this kind of condition, a well-built wall. But these are, what, the best I can describe them is ramshackled and, and kind of tossed together with whatever materials w uh, they had at the time. And I understand that there have been several repairs over the years uh, with the same stone. Just a few more slides. This, this slide, or these, these two slides are important because this is the upper ridge in that second set, section of wall uh, adjacent to the fish ladder. Note the quality of construction. I assure you that the wall was the, the, the new fish ladder that was built in, I guess about 20 years ago, was built with very, very good materials, reinforcement, and the appropriate design. And it actually serves to support the wall on the water side. And the wall is in relatively good condition. Only the, only the portions above the wall should probably be built. They're in, in, in poor condition. But it's a relatively small effort. So this is the final uh, portion of my presentation. It's really the recommended improvements. I think I have three more slides to, to demonstrate this. Um, so let's talk about the wall first. This is the section of wall that supports uh, the infrastructure above and delineates the historic herring run. Um, this wall will be built at, to the highest standards of fieldstone masonry wall um, it will be built to the full height of the, um, of the new plaza, and I'll show you a cross-section. And, uh, it'll, and, and uh, it will have a foundation, and it will last many, many lifetimes. It's about, um, 
about 15 feet underneath the new bridge, about 74 feet back to the, uh, beyond the plaza area, about another 35 to the feet of wall to the fish ladder, and then another 64 feet of wall adjacent to the fish ladder. In addition, uh, we are going to pick up the entire plaza to an appropriate elevation so it'll drain uh, and pitch to the road and se se separate the plaza from the road with the uh, uh, curbing. We're also going to rebuild this section of the landing area where the crosswalk comes across so that this will there'll be a continuous pitch across here, but it'll be less than, um, less than two or three percent where the maximum allowable is five, so it'll be a very gradual progression across this, this, the platform and the, uh, and the um, fountain area. The fountain area is going to be reconstructed with uh, brick, hand-tight uh, hand joint bricks. The fountain will be relocated to be a centerpiece in the, in the plaza. Uh, the benches will be relocated either side. There'll be a uh, ornamental light at this location, and uh, again, we'll, we'll have an ornamental trash container here. Um, this also demonstrates that we're going to do some, some kind of vegetative buffer in here. It'll probably be low, if at all. It'll be low so people can have views of the, um, of the pond. And it, there are some uh, schools of thought where we'd eliminate it completely so that people can walk right up to the edge. You'll note that we have a, uh, there's a, a line here that represents a handrail all the way along the south side and as well as the north side here. The new bridge is roughly to provide a connection between the plaza and the town hall will be um, 19, 20 feet long, six feet wide, and made completely of lumber. Uh, the, the selection of the lumber hasn't been made yet, but it, it's quite possible it could be a, a quality wood like mahogany. Um, and it'll be 100% lumber with the exception of the connecting feature, the connecting bolts and hardware. The rails, balusters, and posts will, the platform and the, and the sub beams will all be lumber. And again, we'll build another plaza here uh, to make a connection. We'll break through the existing wall and connect to the plaza that was built in phase one to provide a continuous connection. Let me show you the next slide. This is this provides some, a real understanding of how we're going to uh, improve um, the plaza. As you can see, first of all, we're building a very secure wall that I described earlier. And then we're going to pitch the entire uh, walk surface to the road so that water doesn't collect in this area, but rather collects in the gutter, and we'll provide a new catch basin to collect it. Um, the fountain will be completely supported by a, a, catch, a, a large drain. It'll be like a tree grate. So that all the moisture from the, that, that spills over can find its way into a sump and direct it to the catch basin. Again, there's the safety rail that we're putting in. It'll be, very, it'll be continuous throughout the, pro, the project, this project area, and there's the light post. Uh, I just wanted to show you a side view of what the bridge might look like. You've seen this in the prior picture, but here's the, uh, the rail that provides uh, the protection uh, along the bridge. And uh, this shows the new retaining walls that will be built uh, to support the walkways and the new elevation. Uh, in here, we'll also put a new control structure. The conservation officers have asked us for a, a more modern control structure. They control the level, control the level of, the, uh, of the pond, mill pond. We're also going to, as, as Paul had said, we're going to, uh, at the insistence of the conservation officers, lower the grade about a foot in the pond to historical elevations. So here's, the, uh, here's our schedule, if, if all goes well. Um, we hope to solicit uh, Community Preservation Committee approval for the $350,000 for the cost of this project, then approach town meeting for, for final approval of the expenditure of the money. We already have Conservation Commission approval for both phases. However, the Conservation Commission reserved the right to look at the final plans. So we'll be going back to those folks for one last peek with the, with the final construction plans. We'll take their order of conditions and roll them into the design plans during the summer. And then we'll bid the project in August and presumably we'll start construction in the fall. It's possibly as little as a three month construction period, but it could, it could find its way into the following season for plantings and things of that nature. 
And that's the extent. I'd like to introduce Mr. Shaw, and perhaps he could provide some closing remarks for us. Obviously, this is an extraordinarily important project. Uh, in terms of completing the access that was undertaken in this building that we're in right now. Uh, the uh, Historical Commission uh, voted unanimously to support this project in the full amount because it is, in fact, all of this area is the most historic area in the town. The Dexter Grist Mill, uh, the herring run, which probably goes back 10,000 years at least <laughs> uh, to when the glaciers retreated north after creating Sandwich and the rest of Cape Cod. Uh, this particular project, as you can see in this visioning statement, uh, was prepared in, uh, recommended by the architect, Wendell Calso, in April. The rendering was produced. The committee, uh, the town hall committee at that time, endorsed this. But our feeling then was we've got the whole plate on our plate of this building. And so we postponed it. But the moment has come now to undertake this. Uh, frankly, uh, when I walk out of the town hall and turn right <laughs> to go back up to Jarvis Street, and I have to walk out in the street. Uh, that is unpleasant. And that's for me, and I'm capable of walking around. The handicapped, anybody in a wheelchair, can't possibly do it. And frankly, the liability that, that is, the town is exposed to is enormous. Accessibility is not a minor feature of historic projects. I'm sure this board is aware of what the cost was to put in the elevator in this building. Uh, it's something that has to be done to make historic projects function in the modern day. Uh, the fountain out there was put in in uh, the plaza, if you can call it that, the sunk plaza was put in in 1959. No one had any idea about having wheelchaired individuals come out and actually not, if, if, if you remember what I remember, people in wheelchairs weren't ever seen anywhere. Uh, that They were literally in the closet. And uh, so at that time, it was a very innovative thing to do not innovative now. So those are the kinds of corrections that have to take place. As far as the fountain itself, it's been in that site as an artesian fountain since the 1870s. And uh, there are some photographs that so show far in the distance uh, this fountain uh, functioning. So it's become in itself a historic feature. And uh, so we're, we're getting a number of things here that we're getting access for. From the Dexter Grist Mill, the historic Dexter Grist Mill that probably originated in the 1640s when the, uh, the town was settled to the, to the uh, town hall, the 1834 town hall, to the fountain that is 1870 approximately. Uh, all of these things are being combined. So that's the reason that the Historical Commission uh, endorsed this, supported it unanimously, and feels it's absolutely essential uh, to go forward on this project. Okay, good. Jo John, just let me clarify or add to what you had said about the photograph up there. It was April of 2009. Construction or renovation didn't start until, I think it was July 1st, of 2009. The idea of this additional, what we now call phase two, it wasn't phase two when we originally, you know, thought no, of it. No, it was part of it. It was part of the original plan. As we were running out of money and time, we decided to just stay with that, that piece of um, gardens and walkways and 
uh, that are directly in front of the building as part of phase one and hoping to come back. The key here has always been the co-application or a, a co-applicant, that is the Board of Select Motor of Town and the Sandwich Historical uh, Commission uh, for, you know, requesting CPA funds. So that's, that's why you're here. Uh, when we discussed this in the, uh, in the meeting uh, of the Historical Commission, uh, we stated that we were interested in being a co-applicant with the town, as was done for the three times that uh, came before the uh, town meeting and the CPC for the funds. Okay. I'm going to open up to the board. Questions? Jim. Uh, a, couple of a couple of technical questions, I guess. Is this a true artesian well, and does that put some limitations on the height, or on where the, where the top of the fountain has to be? Remarkably, that's the trickiest part of the project. Uh, because um, the artesian water pressure is, is really has to be measured. We're probably, we're going, we may ask, we may provide the contractor with a menu of, uh, of testing requirements to help us ensure that we get the appropriate height and we get the volume that we're looking for. But I, I don't, I uh, honestly well, I, don't I just know. I was just wondering whether right now the fountain is at sort of a waist height that may, it's convenient Correct. to bend over and take a drink of water if it's only this high off of the new base that's. Uh, not going to be the case. All right. Well, you've got. You're you're aware of that. That's a bit of a challenge for us. Yes, oh, sir. Good. Glad we did. I know. Challenge. <laughs> uh, the the storm runoff uh, when you went through that. Uh, where will that run off to? Is it going to go back into the creek, or uh, are we putting salt in the? Um, or? Well, let me just show you the plan. We've provided a catch basin here. So the water will drain here, a drain towards the roadway, and collect in that catch basin. Now, originally, we're going to, uh, that has a sump to it, so we'll catch uh, uh, solids, and it'll, it'll be like best management practices to keep uh, any uh, solids and sands out of the pond. We had originally proposed to connect an outlet here. The conservation agents have already asked us to connect across the street to the existing uh, the, the uh, catch basins and drainage system we put in in 2007. So it'll go downstream rather than uh, being uh, deposited in the, in the pond. Thank you. Uh, the uh, many folks in town uh, get their drinking water from that fountain. Uh, during the construction period, will there be any uh, provisions made for those folks so that they can still go and fill up their, their plastic jugs and it's in some fashion, will you, be able, will you be able to pull it off to some place outside the construction area, I guess, is what I'm asking you. Honestly, we hadn't thought that far ahead. It, if, it, if it stays in the same construction zone, it would be a hardship for the contractor to allow access and probably a liability. But perhaps we can give some thought to plumbing it uh, out of this, the work zone for some, a some short period of time. Some kind of temporary plumbing yes, sir. Uh, that just will allow, uh, you know, I, I, there's not a day you go down there that somebody, right. even in the dead of winter, hour. is there filling, filling bottles up. We have a plumber on board. Okay. So. And then the last one's kind of a process question. Uh, you have the conservation, uh, you, you've, done, you've done your homework with the Conservation Commission. You have the Historical Commission fully behind you. Uh, this is uh, squarely in the Old Kings Highway Historic District. Is there any homework to be done with those folks? I just, believe... Uh, I believe they have jurisdiction over anything, any structure over six inches. So I think that they would have an opportunity to look at the railings. I, I think see. that's the only thing they would have jurisdiction on, but I need to check into that. Yeah, because uh, they do have, uh, they were formed by legis state legislation, mm -hmm. what, 50, 60 years ago, Jonathan? Is that, and uh, they do have jurisdiction over pretty much everything north of Route 6. So. It, it would be necessary to seek their uh, uh, approval of this. Yes, sir. Might be good to do that early. <laughs> they, they did so on this building yeah. as well. So it went before the historic uh, district commission yeah. as well. That's, that's the end of my list. Okay. Any other questions? All right. Paul, I have a question for you. Are you planning to use any of your resources to do any of the work here? Yeah, to, to the maximum extent possible, we, we hope to use our, our staff to uh, help construct a portion of this. And uh, you know, along with the potential use of the Cape Cod Technical School to build a bridge, 
I think we can certainly save some money in that sense. <coughs> If I'm not mistaken, um, maybe five, six years ago, former selectman Doug Dexter, I believe, worked with Bud on an engineering report. Yeah, when Joe's firm did the redesign of that whole area, we, uh, we had them do some, um, you know, structural analysis of the wall, which is why he's clearly saying, you know, we should just replace the whole thing, basically. Yeah, and that's what I remember from yes, that sir. particular report, the underpinnings of that wall that are directly behind where the well is, in other words, on the mill pond side, uh, there, there's nothing. It's just kind of like suspended there. If it's remarkable. His, if you go in his office, you know, you, I think it's your office, you can look across and you can see like underneath it as well. So that thing, and we were concerned when they were, when the state was repaving the highway. Uh, in fact, we had asked them, as I recall, to fix this thing and they didn't want to touch it with a 10 foot pole is what I recall. They said, no way, we'll do it. We said, hey, maybe this thing is going to give way. And, you know, they kind of shrugged their shoulders and, and said, it's your problem. Deal with it. So. Yes, sir. Um, okay. So I'll take a motion to be co-applicants on this. Can uh, I just add some but, stuff, Frank? But, yeah, yeah there's a couple things I want to add. First of all, before I forget, if anyone, because they often ask, that water gets tested once a month. And I hate to burst people's bubbles, but it doesn't test any differently than what comes through your tap. So. People may think it's the fountain of youth, but it really isn't any different than what comes through your tap. Um, yeah. Um, I also think I've been told historically the fountain actually came up on the other side, and there's actually something that pipes it up on this side because it, they thought it was better traffic at the time. But if you, if you see how difficult it is when people park there, which there is no parking, it's, it's in the federal requirements, but um, obviously sometimes people do. Um, I will also note that looking out the windows at Town Hall, not that we do it often, but the way the steps go down towards the bubbler, um, you know, in the winter you see it when it's a sheet of ice and people still go in there. In the fall when the leaves have covered up the drains and it literally water backs up to the level of the road, people wait in there and do it. When people are exercising, they refresh themselves in ways that could only be shown on evening cable. It's, <laughs> it's unbelievable, it's unbelievable what people you know, how, how much that bubbler's used. So, you know, purely from just safety standpoint alone, and I see Paul's guys down there all the time, shipping ice, trying to pull up the leaves. It, you know, something like this is desperately needed. Um, I also think it's extremely wise. If we weren't gonna do the whole way up to the ticket booth, it makes no sense. You know, why, you know, we wouldn't have appropriated two million for town hall and only did two thirds of the project. If we're gonna do it, we should do it right, which is what's, what's recommended. And then last, I just want to note what's in your packet, um, because all this is consistent with the note that I sent you in September. And if you remember at the time, the board, I think it was unanimous consensus of the board that they backed up and supported what I said in my, my memo to the Community Preservation Committee, that the funds in that CPA fund have gone down to such a level at this point, it's gotten to the point now that I wanted the board to chime in on any project that involved any town, you know, Thing that we own or that we're responsible for, I wanted to make sure the selectmen were on board because the funds have gotten to a low enough level that we need to, I need to make sure that you're okay with it because the policy of the CPC is I have to, I personally have to sign off on any application involving any town, you know, um, anything that we own or responsible for. So I want to make sure that you guys are comfortable with it. And then just to show you what the numbers show, uh, we're projecting a balance for the fiscal year that we're in right now of about this is after all the funds roll in, and we pay the obligations that were voted at the annual town meeting last May and at the special in early November. Um, there'll be about $900,000 in our total funds. So if this is 350, dollars there'd still be money in there. Um, if you recall, when we went through these numbers before the special town meeting, it was dropping as low as about four or 500000 because there was the $400,000 worth of land purchases of the three parcels from the Tarantino family. And then there were some questionable title issues that we discovered prior to the meeting, so we bypassed that. that that's why, if you ask today, why does it look like there's a little bit more here than what we thought in November, that's why. Um, and I will point out, and I, I think you all share these opinions, that um, we know it's getting tight, but I just wanna make sure that you guys are okay before I go ahead and sign anything. And after we take a vote on this one, I wanna update you on one other application that I know wants to be submitted, and I think will probably be submitted whether I sign off on it or not, but following the policy, I just think it's important for me to share that with you guys. Okay. Uh, Jonathan, uh, will you be at the, uh, the CPC meeting that's scheduled this, this month? 
Yes, I, uh, I represent the uh, Historical Commission. And our, yeah, other I, I'm not going to be able to make that meeting, but uh, the reason I ask is that uh, at one of the, either the last meeting or the one before, there was some discussion about some funds that had been okayed by town meeting but not expended, and whether those could be uh, returned to the return to the fund. Uh, and I, I don't recall the uh, the projects at this time, but is there a way to kind it of requires? Them? I mean, it, like say for example, we appropriated fifty thousand, but we only spent forty five. That yes. Say we appropriated 50000 and the project was never bid or couldn't go forward with it for whatever reason, it would take a town meeting vote to return those funds. Right. If, we, if we really get tight, we might consider putting it a warrant well, on the there's The only one I can think those. of like that is, um, and I'm going to screw up the exact amount, it was about one hundred and forty to 160000 for the um, Sandwich Adventure Playground that we haven't been able to spend that. I guess it would just be good to identify what might be available yeah. there in case we do get tight and have to put an article on the warrant to do something like that. Just to remind everyone, we raise roughly, because you take a 3% of your tax bill, I think we raised something like $1.2 million for the CPA account. And I think this past year, we got 27% of that from the state mm -hmm. CPA. Okay. Yeah, this past year, we brought in 1.265 in our own money, and the state um, contributed 376000 So this is not a new tax. This, we already no. collected the money. Yep. No. All right, you want to take a vote? You want to just give sure. them consensus? Uh, whatever you want to do. I'll move that we um, be co -applicants. Yeah, be co-applicants for phase two of the town hall project. Second. Any further questions? All in favor? Aye. 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 Gentlemen, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank I you appreciate for your patience. It. Thank you.